by Mahrud Serafi. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for being here shortly after lunch or during lunch, or I don't know what's the exact timing of lunch during DEF CON. It's my first time. Um, so this talk, uh, everything about it started during an internship I had at Cloudflare uh, with Nick Sullivan, who's sitting there uh, over the summer. Um, essentially, uh, I joined a week or two after Cloudflare launched this uh, uh, consumer uh, DNS, pro, uh, DNS service, uh, 1111. You may have heard about it. It was a small thing. Um, and one day Nick, Nick walks in and says, okay, we don't keep any logs of users um, and anything that we happen to have any sort of IP information we delete after 24 hours, but what if we moved that over Tor so we didn't have any information about the US user requests? So that's sort of the whole chain of, uh, chain of events that you know, we started looking at how do we do this over Tor, how do we, uh, starting an onion service uh, to serve as our um, DNS over HTTPS server, and uh, ran into some problems. One of them, which I imagine if you run any Onion services you might have noticed, is if you want to add HTTPS to your um, Onion service, you um, have the option of paying a lot for extended valuation uh, or using your own uh, certificate authority, which is, which is not a good idea generally. So here's an alternative um, that I sort of connect back to, uh, uh, to an older idea which is um, opportunistic encryption. So opportunistic encryption is, is an idea, well, not, a, not just one idea, but, but in general across many different protocols, um, as far back as star TLS and uh, very recent as uh, uh, upgrading uh, HTTPS over HTTP and things like that. Uh, the idea is uh, you can start the connection uh, normally unencrypted, but there is some sort of tag, some sort of, um, you know, communication, and if the server and client both support it, they can upgrade their connection over a more secure format. So, uh, the motto on, on the RFC that announced uh, opportunistic encryption was some protection most of the time. Uh, on the other hand, mine is opportunistic onions, more protection some of the time. And here is how it works. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna start with uh, a short crash course of how Tor works. Um, of course, I'm not going to include all the details, uh, but it'll be the gist of it, hopefully. Okay, so, great, nothing is out of the screen. So, on that side, we have a client laptop, and this side, we have the origin web server. In the middle, we have the Tor cloud. Well, we have the Tor network. Uh, in the middle, we have uh, a bunch of different nodes, some of them are relay nodes, exit nodes, um, various kinds of uh, parties in the, in the Tor network. Uh, we also have the hidden service directory, which is sort of in, be uh, in between, inside and out. The, the, uh, the address to those hidden service directories are fixed, and, and the first time the client is trying to make some com communication to get uh, information about the rest of the nodes has to do some out of Tor network communication. Okay, so the first step, I numbered them. The, the zeroth step is getting some of the, uh, information from the hidden service directory. Then, via some process, uh, the client establishes a circuit to an exit node somewhere in the world, and this circuit passes through uh, a guard node that may or may not be fixed, and uh, a, relay node, a relay node, and after that, the, relay, the, the, the exit node uh, essentially uh, requests whatever uh, final destination, final uh, you know, website you wanted from the internet, and sends that back to you over the Tor network. So, uh, but before that, the exit node has to also make a DNS inquiry if the, if the request was a, was a domain name, not an IP address, and then make the request to the origin, and, and I've sort of color-coded this. Uh, the green ones are encrypted, the orange ones may or may not be encrypted, because if your origin supports HTTPS, if you're you know, going to, uh, say, gmail.com that supports HTTPS over Tor, uh, then, uh, you usually don't have any problem. But if it doesn't, if the, if the, if the destination doesn't support HTTPS, or if the first request is not HTTPS, um, then that might introduce some problems. Okay. Uh, so what is, uh, wh where does the idea of, of onions come, come from? The idea is, uh, 
take this, take this image that we have. Um, this is sort of the way I intuitively think about it. That look at the exit node, cut it down there, and mirror everything on the left to the right. So essentially, that RP in the middle, the rendezvous point, uh, you can think of it as an exit node on both sides. That's not really an accurate description, but but it does the job of you start with the client starts with connecting to a guard re, guard node, a relay node, the rendezvous point that via some uh, a number of steps uh, establish a con establishes a connection with an onion service, and the onion service note that in this case is inside the Tor network. So no communication is uh, is is going outside of the Tor network on this side. Versus here, this communication number five and four were going out of Tor network. Here everything is inside. Okay, so uh, what can we do with this? Uh, first of all, as I said, one problem is that um, if you want to have an HTTPS certificate for an onion service, if you have any, if you've, if you've seen any onion services, the addresses look like uh, a 56 character, if randomly, lo random looking 56 character um, domain name dot onion, or, or the older uh, HSV2, which is uh, shorter, but, but still uh, a semi-random string of characters dot onion. So one question is, how do you, how do you remember this, this address? Um, some people like Facebook, for instance, uh, try to essentially mine a, a nice looking uh, uh, address. So they, they, they generated Facebook www core i or something like that dot onion. Um, but uh, if, if in general, you know, some, anybody wanted to do that, First, they would have the problem of many people don't have that much, that much computing power. And two, even if you do, if you want to have um, an HTTPS certificate for your website, again, you have to go to uh, certificate authorities and you have to pay for extended valuation, which costs a lot, at least a few hundred dollars a year, I think. Um, and uh, I, I personally think it's too much. Uh, so the alternative is, is this. So imagine, that the origin um, was partially in the Tor network and partially out. Okay, so the first, the very first connection, the very first request that you make, still goes through the uh, the, the same steps through a guard relay. Uh, sorry, through a guard, a relay, exit node, requesting the DNS information, making connection to the origin. So far, everything is the same. Then, the origin responds with an alt service header. What is an alt service header? An alt service header is a new HTTP, well not, not so new, but uh, it's a recent uh, HTTP header that essentially tells the website that if you want to communicate with this host, uh, you can also use this other host. Uh, that, you know, the, the origin tells the client that this, is, this has the same credentials, this is, has the same resources, everything the same. There's a, there's a small difference though. This, this is not to be confused with, um, you know, the old like Apache rewrite rules. This is different because Apache rewrite rules you could, you could have, for instance, for a certain, uh, for certain pages you could have a rewrite rule or something like this. This is for the whole, for the whole, uh, host. So for instance, if I, uh, you know, if I own, uh, I don't know, example.com and I say you can also reach example.com via, uh, you know, a certain IP address, then after a certain, after a number of steps, uh, after a number of steps, the browser makes sure that uh, the two host names are, you know, can, can serve the same website, they have the same HTTPS uh, certificate, and then instead of connecting to the, to example.com, if, for instance, the network connection to the IP address is faster, can make the connection to the, to the IP address. So what we do is we send an alt service header, and in it we put the address for uh, the onion service. Uh, and so the point here is that you're making a connection to example.com, and you get a response that says, you can also connect to me via this long string of characters dot onion, this is also um, another address for me. What the browser does, the browser sends a request to that, establishes a circuit with that onion service. So here's where I go here. After getting the alt service, 
uh, the client establishes a circuit to the Onion service and verifies that the Onion service can serve the same exact certificate, the same exact HTTPS certificate as the origin in the, in the very first request. So the important point here is that the, the certificate does not have to be, does not have to have the, uh, the Onion address uh, in it. It can only have, it can, it only needs to have the, the, you know, example.com. Does that make sense? So the main point that you needed extended valuation was that dot onion, you know, uh, certificate, uh, certificate, certificate authorities don't like uh, giving free uh, certificates to uh, dot onions, but with, for instance, let's, en let's encrypt, you can, you can get uh, a free certificate for, certificate for your website, and using this system, you can use the same exact certificate uh, to establish, um, well, to, to have an onion service. Okay, so any, any questions so far? Before I go into benefits and why why we did this, sure. Right. So uh, yes. So you notice here that um, from this picture to this picture, the length of the circuit from the client to the onion service is shorter. So the point is that um, this system is 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 for when uh, the content provider, the the onion service, wants to remain hidden. But if uh, you know, we are talking about a website that already has a domain name, uh, that already has a publicly accessible IP address. You know, th there's nothing. There's nothing to prevent. The point at this point is to enable uh, people from the Tor network to connect to it uh, instead of going through an exit node. Just connect directly all inside the Tor network, right? So there is no uh, there is no privacy or anonymity cost for the for the web server because um, you know the the, the the, the you know the location was already public to begin with, uh, but that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Okay, so um, let's look at some of the benefits. Uh, first of all, uh, this is going to reduce the load on the exit nodes because uh, only the very first request has to go through an exit node. After that, the browser can uh, you know for a certain amount of time perhaps remember that. This, uh, this host name can be accessed via this onion, onion service and only make connections uh, to the onion service. Um, another is that uh, the attack surface from the exit node is reduced because instead of every request going, going through it, the exit node, only the very first one does, does that. And lastly, because of that, uh, we think this improves privacy of the users. For instance, uh, you know, there, there are some um, papers on uh, correlation, at correlation attacks on the Tor network if someone could observe network traffic coming out of um, user's client, for instance, at ISP level, and coming into the, uh, to the Onion service. For instance, if you were running an Onion service on you know, Google Cloud and uh, your internet was, or your user's internet was via Google Fiber, then Google would have information on both sides of the Tor network, going in through Google Fiber and going out to Onion Service. And at that point, Google could have some you know, information via some correlation attacks. Um, and this would hopefully prevent it because only one request uh, is going through and you can't, you can't do any sort, sort of correlation of how much, you know, how much the size of the content is or anything like that. Okay, but specifically, why was Cloudflare interested in this? This is because we can, because of the system, instead of, so from, from the server's point of view, from Cloudflare's point of view, instead of all the requests coming from uh, the IP address of the exit node, we see sp specific circuits. We can't uh, you know, identify who the user is, but we can distinguish them. We can say that this is, uh, this is a circuit for the first user, this is a circuit for the second user, and then they're separate separate users. Um, I should note that users can have multiple circuits and, and we can't, we have no way of link, linking those. So it doesn't, uh, you know, cost any anonymity for the user, but it gives us the advantage of, uh, you know, having more fine grained la race limiting, which means if, if, you know, an exit node, uh, if, if there are a lot of DDoS attacks or something like that coming from an exit node, we don't have to ban all of it and ban, you know, all the, or, you know, capture all the good people using that, um, that exit node we can look at the circuits individually and say, oh, this circuit is doing something you know, funky or too many requests or they look like some sort of you know, SQL attack or something like that. We will capture that, but anyone else can, can carry through normally. 
So this is going to hopefully uh, reduce capture friction for Tor users. Let's see, and uh, I should mention many thanks are owed to uh, Mozilla, people at Clackler, of course, and uh, the Tor project. We had a meeting about a couple of min uh, months ago to discuss, you know, how could we uh, make this actually usable, and part of it was having the Tor browser, the new the new version of the Tor browser, which hopefully should be coming out soon, uh, be able to use this alt service header and also use HTTP2, which was a requirement for for this system to work. Um, and 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 I should mention, if you want to test this, um, feel free to send an email to onion beta at cloudflare.com. Um, this is also uh, okay for free customers. You don't have to be a paid customer. And um, uh, also on the on the client side, if you want to test it, you would have to go to the config and just change two things, namely uh, uh, enable alt service and uh, enable HTTP2. Um, okay, any questions? I have one more thing to, oh, yes. If one you have questions, we're going to bring questions up to the mic, just so everybody oh, can see, hear. See. Okay. So, but you still have a few minutes, so you're good. Sure. So um, one last thing that I promised in the description to offer was a caddy. Caddy is a uh, HTTP2 server um, plugin to enable this. This is uh, currently on GitHub. Uh, if you find my GitHub account, I should have perhaps put a link here. Um, it is called caddy-opportunistic-onion, uh, or sorry, caddy dash alt onion and uh, also if you send an email to this, um, I'll make sure to publicize it via that. And, and hopefully at some point it'll be published on Caddy's website. Thank you. All right, any questions line up to the mic please? We got five minutes for questions and then after that if uh, the speaker has time you can tag up with them uh, outside. Hi, uh, I have two questions. Uh, first one is, uh, what do you think of the implication of uh, bootstrapping this process based on DNS? And the second one is, yeah, how reliable is the uh, circuit tracking to identify clients on uh, hidden services? Right. Uh, so the first question was, uh, uh, so we've actually thought about ways of providing, um, you know, if, if we see a request, okay, we already have uh, a DNS server uh, on an, an onion service. So we were thinking of how can we have, you know, if, if, a, if a request is coming through this onion service which serves a, a DNS, the client clearly supports Tor, so we can, we might as well send maybe a C name or something like that directly to the onion address. We are still, um, you know, we're trying to work out the kinks of it to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no chance of us, the server, uh, this, the DNS provider, or, or, you know, maybe not us, but whoever is the DNS provider you know, giving you a random onions, onion address. That's yeah. one, one, one problem. The second one, uh, was it about uh, fingerprinting the users? No, is it, it is about, um, like, uh, to my understanding, it's not, uh, I didn't know there was a one-to-one -one mapping between the circuits, uh, hidden service builds with these clients and uh, actual clients. Oh, the, 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 this is not a one-to-one -one correspondence. So, um, uh, each individual Tor client can can establish multiple circuits. In fact, the circuits happen all over the time. You know, uh, the, the the connection you make to the hidden service directory, or maybe not that one, the connection to um, each of the relays, the rendezvous points, all of these, or to introduction points for the onion service, all of these are circuits, um, and all of the all of them have some sort of internal ID to you know to distinguish them. Um, so. In a sense, between a client and an onion service, there can be multiple circuits. Um, but the point is that we can ban we can you know challenge each circuit individually instead of instead of just and massive per IP address or something like that. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's give All it right. up for our esteemed speaker. Thank you.